Okay, let's learn us some badass moves. Remember, these moves are only as effective as you're able to use them instinctively. In the split second, it matters. So your best chance of survival is learning and committing to memory as few moves as possible. My system is simple, but it's still a lot to learn. So be patient with yourself. Practice as much as possible, and keep in mind that not everything you learn here is going to work for you. That's okay. This is a system with something for everybody, not everything for somebody. Just concentrate on the moves that work for you. Practice and memorize those. Don't fall into the trap of you have to master everything. That's a load of crap. Even the best fighters have just a handful of go-to moves, and so can you. Practice each move first into the air and into any kind of padding you have. Your pillow, your couch, your punching pad or bag, your dad, and then ideally again with a buddy, though still using pads, of course. You don't want to hit your buddy at full force, I'm guessing, but who knows? Remember, it's not just about what you practice, but how you practice. You want to create as realistic of scenarios as possible when you practice these moves, especially with your buddy. This includes giving as good as you get. With consent, of course. You'll get a better sense for what that will feel like and how much you can take and create a more realistic scenario for you both. Plus, as an added bonus, you get a full sense for how much power your body is capable of you might be surprised how hard you can actually hit and how empowering that feels. It needs to become instinct for you to launch into these moves with full force and feeling as soon as the threat becomes real and imminent and unavoidable. She who hesitates is lost or injured or dead. So with that in mind, let's start with our first move, the eye gouge. The point is, your assailant's head needs to be close enough for you to reach out and grab. Wrap your hands around the sides of your assailant's head, fingers bracing against the back for leverage, and really dig your thumbs into his eyes. Next is the ear twist. Here's the gist of it. Grab their ear, or any other body part, ideally with your thumb facing down, and then twist your hand back as hard as you can with all your leverage, rotation, and speed. Our next basic move is one of the most universal and invaluable, the palm strike. Now it's important to mention that a punch is not the equivalent of this move. This is far, far superior. You should never, ever use a fist unless you are properly trained to do so. Punching with bare fists runs a high risk of fracturing your knuckles. Boxers and MMA fighters mitigate this risk by wrapping their hands. So unless you have and know how to use any wraps or hand protection, do not punch. Stick to the palm strike, which frankly can take a bigger beating than your fist. From your ready stance, rotate your body as you extend your arm and hand with the heel of your palm out and bring it back. Think about reaching for something, turning your body to get that full reach without leaning over. Reach as far as you can turn while staying upright and centered then bring it back with that same snapping motion. Practice this move slow at first, then work up to full speed with full force and rotational power. Our fourth basic move, the blade or axe hand, also uses the hand, but a different part of it. It's also widely applicable in any scenario and on any striking point of the body, and it also happens to be a personal favorite of mine. The idea is to create a blade by flattening your hand and tightening your fingers together, hardening the whole thing as stiff as possible. Then you strike with either side of your new hand blade in an axe-like motion on whatever part of your assailant's body you can. The face, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the throat. It works particularly well on the throat. The groin, the shins, the stomach, the foot, all of them. Move number five is another favorite of mine, the elbow strike, which has roots in several martial arts styles, including Krav Maga and Muay Thai. Start by getting into your ready stance. Now take your elbow, and as you rotate your body, bring your elbow up and across in a forward strike. 
For another angle, let's imagine the position you're in has your body turned and your side or back is facing your assailant, like in our second scenario of an attack from the rear. In this instance, you'll want to rotate your body back the other direction as you bring your elbow up and around in a backward strike. There are many other scenarios that may call for an elbow strike. Like say if you're on the ground with your assailant on top and you swing your elbow across to strike him off. Or he's got you in a close range attack like a chokehold and you twist your body to bring your elbow up and over to strike his face and release his grip. Now for move number six, the knee strike. This is essentially the same thing as the elbow strike, just with the lower body. To practice this knee strike, start in your ready stance. Now, when you pick up your back leg to drop forward, swing it outward and upward, driving the top of your thigh up into your assailant's groin or other striking area. Then you can bring your foot forward and down again with the same full body weight of your drop step, driving forward and knocking your assailant off balance which will be a nice added bonus on top of the big knee blow you just gave him. The key is to make contact with your thigh and all its strong, muscly parts, not your actual knee, which is much weaker and will hurt a lot more. I'd call it a thigh strike, but it just wouldn't have the same ring. Our seventh basic move is the all too well-known groin kick. Start in ready stance. Now with a kick move, you'll shift your weight onto your stationary foot as you bring up your kicking foot in a swift flick motion that drives the full rotational power of your body out into the target area and then just as quickly pulls back and drops down again. You want it to be simultaneously powerful and quick. You don't want to take too much time to get into the move or you'll end up telegraphing what you intend to do to your assailant, losing the element of surprise and giving him a chance to counter the attack. You are aiming to connect the top of your shoe with the underside of your assailant's groin. Not the front of his groin, the up and underneath. Way up in there, as way up in there as you can get. Really drive it up in there. I once kicked a guy in the groin so hard I lifted him off the ground with my foot. That's what you want to do, because that will cause the most damage and give you the best chance to get away to safety. The eighth move on our list, the shin or knee kick, takes that same kicking motion and applies it to your assailant's shins or knees. To practice this kick, start once again in your ready stance. Now rotate your body toward the side it won't be kicking, pivoting and shifting your weight once again onto the stationary foot as you flip your kicking foot out in a quick and powerful kick motion, aimed directly into and through your assailant's shin or knee and then just as quickly driving forward with a drop step into your ready stance. Next, move number nine is the foot stomp. Let's give it a go. From your ready position, raise your stomping foot up and back down again swiftly and forcefully into a sharp, decisive stomp. Remember to put your full body weight behind it for extra force. This also helps you drive forward with your body as you stomp. Again, aiming for where your assailant is currently standing. Our tenth and final basic self-defense move is the hip thrust. This move is primarily useful for a ground assault, with your assailant on top of you pinning you down. Now this move is rarely enough to get away in of itself. So the goal here is to free yourself and your limbs enough to go into a barrage of other moves from our list and do enough damage with those to help you get away. Now, what you'll do in one swift motion is plant your feet and raise your hips sharply into the air like you're doing a hip thrust or glute bridge exercise. Now add in a slight rotation as you thrust and your assailant is launched forward and to the side of you. This will give you a window to push him further off you or shrimp out from under him or at least start striking him with all those other moves from your freed side. So as soon as this move frees you enough to push or wiggle or hit your way out, you want to get back up on your feet as quickly as possible and hopefully make your escape, or if necessary, continue fighting back from there. And that's it. Whew, you did it. You just learned the 10 basic moves you need to defend yourself in any situation or scenario.
Now, I know this was a particularly long video, and we covered a lot, so don't hesitate to come back and re-watch this video anytime you need a refresher. I'll always be here, or at least this recorded version of me will. Remember to make it as realistic as possible, though of course without horribly endangering yourselves. Happy training! Thank <laughs> you.